Well, this is it, everyone. After the long wait, the turkey convention is finally here. Was it worth the wait? Did it live up to our expectations? Did they finally get the color of the suit right? Well, if I answered these questions in the first paragraph, this video wouldn't be that long now, would it? It's honestly been a bumpy road getting here, and I've been a little afraid to write this review because I know people have been waiting for it for so long. I have a lot to live up to, I guess. No pressure, right? But after stressing myself out like crazy about it, I finally figured out what I want to do. I'm just gonna say how I feel, and that should be good enough. Let's hop right in. And since there's no fall damage, that shouldn't be a problem. I've made a lot of jokes about people overhyping this game in the last two years, and a lot of them misconstrue that for me saying the game will suck. I hear a lot of, just because you're not excited doesn't mean you have to mock everyone who is. Which is the finest damn straw man argument this side of the Mississippi. No, I'm not making fun of people who are excited. Because I was excited too. I took pot shots at people who were being unreasonable and having expectations this game could never live up to. When people are unironically pushing for it to be Game of the Year 2018 two months before it even releases, you know there's a problem. However, I think it lived up to my expectations, which were, it'll probably just be like the Amazing Spider-Man games, but more polished and with a respectable budget. And in that regard, I wasn't let down at all! Well, unfortunately, this game is not the second coming of Christ that has ended all strife and ushered forth a prosperous golden age of man. It's still pretty good. Is it definitive Spider-Man game good? Well, I guess that's the question we're here to answer, aren't we? Let's take a look at this thing piece by piece and see how well it holds up. Both as a standalone and as an addition to a long lineage of dead uncle simulators. Be warned that there's so much to cover and talk about with this game that I'll probably be listing it out by sections instead of writing clever transitions. Eh, if you think you could do better, write your own 14-page review. Maybe it's the game we've been looking for that'll finally make you feel like a poor person with way too much guilt and high intelligence that he wasted at a dead-end job with several failed relationships and extreme depression that he masked with a sense of humor. Gameplay! Okay, so there's a lot to sort through here, but right off the bat, I'm very happy with the combat. It feels like Insomniac actually did listen up and take notes from the previous videos. I think the perfect Spider-Man fight mechanic should be like a cross between Ultimate's visceral and acrobatic melee moveset. Spider-Man 2's Spider-Sense dodge, and Web of Shadows' web strikes. The punches feel powerful and painful, you can dodge an enemy's attacks in fluid motions, and you can take the fight to the skies and combine movement with the attacks. If I were a betting man, I'd say it was just a case of parallel thinking in a lot of ways, because why on earth would they take the advice of a schmuck like me? Have you seen how I dress? As I requested, the combat feels like it has a lot of weight and impact, with Spider-Man's punches carrying a lot of strength. He's not shooting lasers out of his hands like in the old days, but it feels very visceral and powerful. Plus, you can do all kinds of neat stuff like swing kick from friend or foe, bouncing off walls like Ultimate, and a strong uppercut like in Spider-Man 2. It's not just mashing two buttons. This combat is fun and engaging, and it takes a while to fully master. I also appreciate that instead of using a counter button like in the Arkham games, they just use a spider sense dodge mechanic to hop out of the way when it looks like you're about to get splattered like Charlemagne's head. Sorry, Charlie. Remember that time Spider-Man accidentally killed that lady? Why don't we talk about that anymore? Anywho, there's plenty of spider manslaughter to be had in this game too. Check out all this nice, non-lethal, friendly neighborhood street justice. You okay? Sounds like a big job. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of the old ultra violence. The only thing I think they could have improved on combat is the aerial battles. There are a couple of flying enemies in the game, and taking them on feels a little clunky. Granted, the sky combat works, but it won't top the web strike from Web of Shadows. God, was that a cool mechanic. You could fight pretty much any enemy in that game without ever having to touch the ground. Throw that in the sequel, please. I mean, there's something kind of like the web strike here, but it's just, it's, it's not, it sucks. He just whacks them and goes back to standing on the ground like a punk. Go flip! Yeah! Oh, I guess the air throws and web yank and whatnot are okay. Something I think they finally nailed was what to do with Spider-Man's damn webbing. 
Every game has tackled it and couldn't quite figure out how to fully utilize it in combat since he can do so many things with it. Some games, the webs were just a stream to tie guys up, sometimes it was web pellets to stun enemies, sometimes it was to swing them around and throw them off buildings, come on, you know you did it. That game solves the conundrum with a simple solution. Just have a weapon wheel to cycle through them, plus a few other neat gadgets which are pretty hit or miss. Impact webbing is awesome, you can send criminals flying with it. The seismic blast thing is kind of lame because it only knocks them back a little bit and it's kind of redundant. Come on guys, we already tried that shtick in Amazing Spider-Man 2, it's not really a great idea. I mean it kind of works if you drop a web bomb first and then just shove everyone at a wall. I guess two lame gadgets used in succession makes for something cool, so I'll give them a pass. The anti-gravity bomb thing feels... uh... kind of dumb? I can't really picture Spider-Man using something like that. Pass, but not like like a pass like the other things got. I mean like, like pass them up, ah whatever. Okay, now this one I like. This spider drone may not seem like much, but when you fully upgrade it, it's super overpowered. Just unleash your swarm of robots, and by the time you finish punching one guy, the other 12 standing behind him are already on the ground sobbing. Damn, this thing's badass! I think I'll name him... Charlie. One of the gameplay elements I felt took a step down from the predecessors was stealth combat. It's just so unbelievably easy especially considering the amount of gadgets you can use. It's like the Amazing Spider-Man games is stealth, except... Well, actually, yeah, it's just like that, but even easier. Just impact webbing every guy near a wall or ledge, drop some trip mines around corners, let the Charlie Swarm overtake the thugs like a plague of fashionable mechanical locusts. And, of course, you can just web everyone up to these posts and support beams while their oblivious friends aren't looking. Behold my nest of corpses! I shall feed upon them with my acidic fangs, for I am the bone collector! My Charlies will consume this pitiful earth! You know what? I think you can do pretty much every stealth segment in a couple seconds flat if you're quick enough. The enemy AI just doesn't really match up to something like Arkham. They're pretty clueless and easy to pick off. After a while, stealth even starts to get a little repetitive because of this. Maybe some extra animations for the stealth takedowns wouldn't hurt. What happened to webbing guys while on the ceiling or walls? Maybe they could have done with more vent crawling and give you places to hide too? It just feels like Insomniac just threw their hands in the air and said whatever to this section of the gameplay. My god, Otto, this invention is amazing! We can make a mint with this thing! I'll start working on the pitch for the board of directors right away! What's even worse is the stealth sections where you aren't even Spider-Man. Long gone are the days where the alternate playable character in your Spider-Man campaign is someone cool like Venom. Now you gotta walk around as People Man and Dunst Cap. The dynamic, racially diverse duo who do... Duthing? Ah, fuck, I ruined my alliteration. Well anyway, you sometimes play as these two knuckleheads and these sections feel really stiff and clunky. It kills the pacing super hard! Like, you just got done with an Uncharted-style explosive action set piece, and then they ground you as MJ, who dies if any enemy so much as looks in her general direction. What was the idea behind that? Having you play as Marvel's answer to Superman one second, and the next you be this papier-mâché pushover? As these sections go on, they introduce other mechanics for tricking guards into looking away or moving around the area a bit more, but that hardly makes it more engaging. Then on the last section as MJ, you're finally allowed to do a stealth takedown, which... Well, then that makes the mission trivial. You tased me, bro! I get what they were doing with these sections, but they feel just like ill-placed and poorly timed with the game's campaign. Makes you wish they put as much focus into playing as these characters as Spidey. What if MJ had a taser or a can of mace for the whole game? Or maybe Miles could use some other gadgets to knock out enemies. Hell, give me a mechanic to just knock furniture over on top of people. Anything would have been better than... nothing. You also have sections of just walking around indoors as Peter, which isn't anything new. But like, some people were pushing for playing as Peter in the open world. Do you know how boring that would be? It would be this. It's just this. That's what you would get. Do it. Oh, ew. Well, that's embarrassing. What, they think no one was gonna look up there? While the stealth sequences may lack a lot of thought and polish, the open world exploration is the polar opposite. The city looks gorgeous and feels livelier than ever before. 
It finally feels like New York has the correct amount of people and cars. There are cars there, motherfucker! The city feels dense, layered, and crowded, but never to the point of feeling claustrophobic. You still have plenty of room for web swinging and constant menacing. In fact, Insomniac apparently made the streets wider and the buildings taller to accommodate for the spider-themed constabulary to roam around. And they also forgot to include Washington Heights. Again. 0 out of 10, not accurate. They didn't have that crack on the street by 5th Avenue that I saw in the background of a picture once in 2008. Swing around in the city is also extremely relaxing and fun. Look at all these Spider-Man-y poses he does in the game's animations. It looks so fancy! The swinging is just the right speed, he has the right amount of physics applied to it, and it never gets old. Granted, sometimes you get some cloud swinging, but I think that's okay as long as it's not super noticeable. It's one thing to have the webs attached like, three feet to the left of the building, it's another to have it attached like, 40. Or just attached to no buildings at all. Speaking of webs not attaching to things, they'll never patch this cutscene. Plus, unlike most open world games, they actually give you a decent amount of things to do in the city. It's not like that stupid Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising, where you can walk from one end of the game's map to the other in 24 hours, but it's all just trees and rocks. No one is impressed by the size of your game map if there's nothing to do in it, Todd. But anyway, the side missions are plentiful, and you have a lot of variation that keeps you going after them. Be it fighting some lower level villains from the comics, getting some really well written dialogue and cutscenes, or just feeling like you're doing something Spider-Man would do. A lot of these side missions have their own stories and characters that remind me of those one-off Spider-Man issues from back in the old days of comics. Like this one where some birdwatcher calls Spidey down for help and tells him that something fishy is going on in Central Park. And then he has a lot of interesting back and forth with her across the mission as she helps you take down the bad guys. This feels just like an 80s filler issue and those are some of my favorite Spidey stories. You really get a sense that he's a man of the people and a big time superhero because while he's fighting threats that want to destroy the city and take over the world, he also stops with the little stuff. No threat is too big or small. Spidey's one of the few heroes who would actually stop and go help out a guy who was inspired by him to fight crime in his costume. Iron Man wouldn't help this dude, he'd be dead. The side missions are also charming, well written, well paced, and fun that they distract you from playing the main story. In fact, I was procrastinating the final boss for ages because I was having so much fun bombing around as a street level hero with all these more down to earth troubles. But when you do take on these bigger threats, that's when he feels like the type of guy who could beat up the entire X-Men all at once. Remember that? They had to erase his memory of why he was beating them up so that they could get him to stop. People downplay it a lot, but Spider-Man is kinda overpowered. And I think this game does a great job of accurately representing his strength. Finally, a Spider-Man who knows how to stop a moving vehicle more than once in a row. Better call in the bomb squad. I could call in the bomb squad. Bombs IR triggers. Player bottles see the bomb triggers. Bombs under things? Time to find those other bombs. Oh god, it never stops! Beyond the story of the side missions, the game also puts in plenty of reasons to explore the city and do the street crimes. Instead of some dumbass arbitrary point system that's hard to keep track of, you just get one token per crime, and maybe some extra ones if you stop the crime in a specific way. What do you get with these tokens? The usual, upgrades, gadgets, and... <gasps> Those mad geniuses finally figured out how to give incentive to stop street crimes. They've weaponized our obsession with alternate suits. All they gotta do is dangle a fancy new costume in front of us and we actually want to stop thugs for the first time and, well, ever. Look at all these kick-ass alternate costumes. So many slight variations of the classic suit I can't even choose. Should I wear Torn Classic Suit, Additional Black Lions Classic Suit, Cell Shaded Classic Suit, Shiny Classic Suit, or Classic Classic Suit? Hey, wait a minute! Otherwise, the rest of the suits are pretty cool, whatevs. I think they just wanted to make a list of ones we haven't really seen before because all the obvious ones seem to be absent. Ironically, in spite of defending this design in my videos leading up to the game, when given the choice, I never used it during my first playthrough. I think I just associate the image of it with all the rude comments from people with it in their profile pics. So anyway, traversal, the open world, the unlockables, the combat, and the side missions are all great. They really nailed all that stuff, and in spite of my mockeries of their minor flaws, I love the hell out of almost all of it. However, I would be biased if I didn't list off stuff that I think just sucked. 
and not like a bunch of fake cop-out flawed things like, well this game's 19 hours long and it would have been better if it were 20, but it's still great. Or, Spider-Man's suit is a really orangey shade of red. We're talking the real stuff. Like, how the wall crawling mechanic feels like a complete afterthought and he can't climb around two inch tall corners. Come on, how can you not get over that? Why are you struggling? Get over it! Stop treating it like Gwen's death and get over it, you sap! God, they have all these wall crawling sections that are ripped straight from the PS1 games, but they only work because you're going up a completely flat surface. I thought we had this mechanic figured out, guys, come on! What's with these hacking minigames? It's the most generic minigame ever, and they take the game's pacing to a grinding halt. Like you're doing all this high octane, super powered action schlock, and it just stops you to play the plumbing game from Bioshock for Doc Ock. Why am I rhyming? But like, they give you the option to skip these, I guess. So just do that if you want to cut your playtime in half. Pro tip for all you MLG speedrunners out there, just cheat! I love this game's action set pieces, because they're really intricately planned and well animated, but it occurred to me that pretty much all of them were in the game's marketing and they didn't really have ones we didn't see before. Wouldn't that helicopter chase sequence have been way cooler if we didn't see it a year ago? Yo Miles, what's up? Bro, you're not gonna believe this! I just met Spider-Man! You know, I think they won't ever actually cop to naming Miles' friend because the Ned Genki situation would confuse casual viewers. So, nondescript hat-wearing friend you shall remain, sir. These race missions are pretty annoying and you can't really get the gold in them without performing 3.2 million point launches, which doesn't really test your ability to swing at all. They're not fun like an Ultimate Spider-Man, they're just kind of tedious because they have such high expectations for completion. Also kind of like Ultimate Spider-Man. Boy, Taskmaster in this game sure is Deathstroke! <laughs> These bosses are really underwhelming and undercooked. I think this game couldn't quite figure out how to mix the big explosion-y action set pieces with the battles. The bosses are just your pretty standard pattern. Punch him, dodge, throw something at him, punch him. Sometimes they don't even have that, you just gotta hit the guy until he goes down. Spidey is known for all kinds of creative problem solving with his enemies, but that doesn't really factor in here. You won't really need to exploit any weaknesses or use some kind of trick to win, you can just brute force it. Why couldn't they do something like, you trick Electro into shorting out Vulture's wings, or you use the spikes that a Vulture throws as a lightning rod to drain Electro's powers? Why not trick Scorpion into melting Rhino's armor to make him weaker? Or like, anything more engaging than just punching him? Also, this game's selection of bad guys is pretty samey. Of all Spider-Man's villains, they really just use the guys with power armor. Just, just normal dudes using technology to be tough. The only one with honest to god superpowers is Electro, and they even gave him some power armor. Why not throw some variety into the mix with a guy like Lizard, or Sandman, or maybe Mysterio? And while it's very thematically and emotionally hard hitting, I still feel like the final boss of this game is really forgettable in terms of gameplay. That was kind of a letdown, man. You know what else this game needed more of? High speed chase sequences with supervillains. I know they're kind of cliche for this series, but when the traversal mechanics are this good, why wouldn't you want to go chasing after Vulture or Electro at 90 miles an hour through the sky? You get a really great sequence like that with Shocker and Black Cat, of course, but the only other chases are with vehicles and obviously they don't pose much of a chance of giving you the slip. Drug-induced dream sequence and floating debris cityscape? Arkham did it! Finding a series of partial handprints throughout a room to fake out a handprint scanner? Arkham did it! Hell, they even poached Lucius Fox. Oscorp's research and development. Nice. Are hard at work on a radical new form of battery. This backpack thing makes no sense because the webs dissolve after an hour. How the hell did he forget Sandman was trapped in a vial in one of these backpacks? That's like the most dangerous thing ever and he left it on the top of Avengers Tower. Plus, that's pretty unethical, Peter. God, I can't imagine how Sandman feels being stuck in there. He doesn't even get to see sunlight, he just stares at the lint and notebook paper all day for years. Jesus. Graphics. This game is gorgeous. One of the most breathtakingly pretty games I've played in a long time. It really feels like a next-gen experience and this is the first game with a photo mode that I actually want to use. I know a big divide and controversy came about from people arguing about the supposed downgrades from the marketing to the final product. 
Well, to that I have to say, can you show me any big AAA game that doesn't look better at E3? It's a lot easier to render the game when it's 3% of the size of the final product. Of course the graphics were going to take a hit, especially since they had to compact it down for a machine that's less powerful than PC. It happens to pretty much every game these days, good and bad. Does it suck that the colors and textures aren't as nice? Sure, but they probably cut back on those areas to help with stuff like load times and frame rate. This game loads so fast I can't even read the damn hints, that's impressive. But yes, there is a downgrade, somewhat, and that's to be expected. This game still looks wonderful regardless, stop freaking out. You cultists are planning on suing the developer over this? The changes in most areas are pretty negligible and minor, and in others it doesn't look much better or worse, just different. On the flip side, you zombie-like apologists are just as bad with all that No, the developer said there wasn't one, so there isn't. <sighs> Why on earth would they say anything otherwise? Of course they'd be dishonest about it. It's not their job to be honest, it's their job to make sure people buy their game. You'd have to be pretty naive to believe they'd openly admit to their product being less than advertised out of the kindness of their hearts. You know, I feel a pretty big I told you so coming on right now because I said parts of the initial E3 trailer were scripted and a bunch of people kept going, No, it's all gameplay. The developers confirmed it. None of that was a cutscene. Well, I sure enjoyed that trip to Harry's coffee shop in the final game, didn't you? It's kind of weird how this random inner demon guy and Mr. Negative switch places from the demos to the final game. Yow! What the hell? Who threw that? Where'd this duffel bag come from? Who did that? Was it you? Characters. Well, this game has a lot of characters waddling around doing things in its story campaign, so I thought I'd give special attention to how well I think they adapted these fictional people we all know and love. It's a shame Josh Keaton couldn't do the voice of Spidey in this game. Maybe it's because he couldn't do the motion capture. Oh. What? Wh why? He was right there! What was the point of that? Well, anyway, Ben 10 did a really good job of voicing Sasuke Man, and he proved he's a very talented digital actor in the same way that Troy Baker or Nolan North did in those other games. You know, this game has a lot of references to Daredevil. Naughty Dog should make a game about him since they're down a franchise. I really like this game's take on Peter. It seems like they had a really strong grasp on multiple aspects of his personality. He's humble and nerdy, but not to the point of seeming overly quiet and weird. He's sarcastic and funny, but not to the point of sounding like an overconfident jerk. He can get pretty reasonably angry, bitter, and angsty about his struggles in life, but without going overboard or sounding whiny and ultimately still retaining his hopefulness. He feels a lot of guilt, but not to the point of being a self-parody. He's tough, effective, and not incompetent, but still doesn't feel overpowered and unbeatable. He has a tangible passion and love for science without sounding like an obnoxious know-it-all. Plus, he's the right balance of being badass and a loser. Guy can stop a truck with his bare hands, but he also has to do undignified and humanizing stuff. Like digging through the garbage for his personal belongings that were thrown out after getting evicted. This is my favorite mission in the game because this scenario and the awkward phone calls with the sanitation dispatcher feel so much like Peter Parker. This is such a normal and unspectacular conflict in the middle of all this other crazy and epic stuff. I guess I just like how well-rounded this interpretation of Peter is. He's got a lot of complex and varied emotional states and personality traits that make him feel right out of the comics. I think most of the cartoons and movies tend to gravitate only towards a handful of these traits each, leaving their versions of him feeling kind of incomplete. But this guy is the real deal. They did a good job, and I like playing as him in some of the calmer and more investigative moments just as much as the action-y ones. However, MJ is just Lois Lane now. Well, Lois Lane with red hair- or, or wait. Is being an actress not empowering enough? Is that it? I feel like every modern take on MJ gives her a different career and personality because of one really crappy adaptation of her. Even though she shot Green Goblin, defeated Chameleon by herself, saved Spidey from sticks and stone, people will always see her as the weak damsel in distress that needed to be fixed. MJ was never a damsel before those movies, that was Gwen's job. She motherfucker takes her up on a bridge, he gonna get capped before her damn neck snap. Goblins ain't shit to MJ. But whatever, I guess her interactions with Peter still feel mostly on point. 
She's the one with the real power in the relationship, and they only end up together because she decided it. That's all good to me, so I guess I can excuse her being rebooted as a journalist for the billionth time. As for everyone else, Miles is fine. He's just kind of there, I guess. I like that we get to meet his dad first. And Jefferson Davis is really cool. Oh, Otto is actually more likable than he has been in a long time, and I really like the decision to reinforce his established relationship with Peter. Yuri Watanabe continues to be the personification of we killed off Jean DeWolf too soon, so let's replace her with an identical character. Mr. Negative is cool for the first time ever because he's not being written by Slotto Blocktavius, and everyone else is just fine, I guess. Eh, they got the most important ones, right? Hey, just a heads up in the middle of the video so people can't skip it. I'm having a hard time financially right now, and it would mean a lot if you could consider supporting the channel over on Patreon, where we have exclusive videos and behind-the-scenes stuff. And if you want a more short-term way to help out, check out our merch. Okay, back to the video. Story. Well, this game's story isn't anything too revolutionary. It's a compilation of a lot of stories throughout the comics, both new and old. And it does a decent job of building this new universe for future sequels. It also seems to use a lot of ideas from the Amazing Spider-Man series, oddly enough. Like Harry being sick, Oscorp trying to remake Spider-Man spiders to cure him. We kind of resolved that cliffhanger with Fisk from the last game. We got the fake Twitter feed thing, except this time it's a little more believable. And even Blue Electra was there. He hates up the electricity. Hey Miles, fun fact, if you eat that spider, you can turn into a sentient hive mind of a thousand spiders that can wear people as a skin suit. I know you've been looking for ways to differentiate yourself from Peter, so, you know... Just throwing it out there, man. We start with Spidey finally taking down that guy from Full Metal Jacket, and realizing a substantial power vacuum has been left in the crime world. This invites fellas like Mr. Pessimism and the Sinestro Corps to try and take down the corrupt mayor and industrialist, Norman Osman, who looks suspiciously like that one guy. Wow, ain't that some subtle social commentary for ya. But Spidey is a bleeding heart hippie liberal who isn't fine with casual public executions, and works tirelessly to stop Norman Osborn from getting dropped off a building. Boy, is he gonna feel real stupid about this one in a few years. Oh wow, a Spider-Man game where there's a plague that makes everyone in New York sick. That's crazy, we haven't had that before. Something unique to this game is their take on Otto Octavius who is the main villain because Dan Slott's name was attached to this, so of course he is. However, this game reinvents Otto to be more like a longtime friend and father figure to Peter Parker, who has a slow fall from grace due to his hubris and longing to be cured of his physical ailments. The trash boat cometh and Otto loses his mind, making for both a very sad climactic battle and an obnoxious amount of hints about Superior Spider-Man being in the sequel. This all culminates in a very emotional ending that just sort of awkwardly cuts to credits. You know, I feel like it's always really weird when they don't end these on a cool swinging shot. Gwen! No, wait! Oh! Son of a bitch! Sorry, 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 sorry. You know, this is exactly why we broke up. What? MJ? No, I, I screwed up. It, it was a... You know what? Can we not do this right now, please? Listen, I gotta go, Peter. Nice work, Mr. Superhero. MJ is not happy. We've seen another game that balances Peter's normal life and superhero antics pretty well, and another game that gave us a gauntlet of bad guys to test our wits. It's nothing new, but I've noticed the internet has taken to saying this game is the best Spider-Man movie, or this is the best Spider-Man story we've seen in ages. But that begs the question, why is everyone hailing this game as the best adaptation of Spider-Man since... Aww. What is it about this version of Pietro Parkman that beats everything else we've seen? Well, I think the answer is rather simple. Responsibility. At the end of the game, he makes a hard choice and chooses to do the right thing. And more than just responsibility, it's acceptance of adulthood. For context, in 2007 we saw Peter Parker faced with a similar situation, where he could either embrace his future or throw it away to save Aunt May. And for whatever brain-dead reason, Peter suddenly can't deal with loss anymore and reverts from a married man with a daughter and a decent job as a teacher to a jobless man-child who still lives with his mom and doesn't have a girlfriend. Beyond just losing MJ, this was Peter Parker losing his adulthood and being shoved back into his youth because it felt safer at home with Aunt May. 
He rejected the concept of being a man to stay a boy a little longer. Even though Aunt May had already lived a long life and would have probably been proud of his decision had he moved on. Then we have one of the greatest movie trilogies of all time tank itself with a shoddy third installment where Peter becomes an overconfident, self-absorbed jerk even before he got the black suit, only for it to be rebooted with a franchise where he ignores a man's dying wish to make the sacrifice of leaving Gwen out of his life, and in selfishly keeping her causing her death. Now we have a third rendition where this franchise does everything it can to remind you that he's still young at every turn. And then we get this nice little game where Peter is just a grown man who just... who just lets go. Aunt May is the only connection to his childhood, and he leaves her behind so he can save the city and move on with his life. Because it's the right thing to do. Spider-Man was never about a kid being a superhero, it was about a kid becoming a man because he was a superhero. It was about growing up through his sacrifice and his pain molding him into being a better person. But in the past 11 years we've been exposed to this new wave of interpretations where Peter can't grow up, he can't make sacrifices, and he can't be an adult. I swear to god, if any of the current writers at Marvel had a say in this story beyond just advising, Peter would have selfishly saved Aunt May while the whole city burned, because none of them get it. This Peter Parker is closer to the Spider-Man we all grew up on than the one in the comics recently. Even though this ending is just a reverse Last of Us, it's still a very fitting ending and gives me a lot of hope for where this series can go. Assuming they don't make Harry Osborn become Venom, that would suck. I bet you're wondering, is Xavier just gonna say Ultimate Spider-Man and Web of Shadows are the best because he's nostalgia blind? No, I'm going to say this is the best Spider-Man game because of Ultimate Spider-Man and Web of Shadows. And all the others. This game didn't do a single new thing. Everyone's acting like they completely reinvented the wheel, but to me it's obvious that this is the result of a long legacy. Every piece of this game rhymes with something we saw at least once before. Every good idea was innovated in a prior game, but re-implemented here. It's greater than the sum of its parts. This game isn't the best because of all of those other games failing to get it right. This game is the best because all of them did. Here and there. It's a big collage of everything that worked before, beautifully stitched together into something that feels new, but is actually quite familiar. It's the best Spidey game because it's every Spidey game. So don't sell any of the classics short, and certainly don't leave them behind because we wouldn't have this masterpiece without them. It's a love letter not only to Spider-Man, but also to Spider-Man games, both new and old. Truly, the Bomb Squad was the memories we made along the way. It's over. I did what you asked, I made the damn video. But I know you're not planning on letting me go. Very perceptive, Mr. Mendoza. The arachnid conglomerate has finally taken back what we were owed. My legacy. I just want you to let you know. People are gonna notice. People are gonna notice when I'm gone. Oh. Will Lord. they now? You. Of course! While your hoodie-wearing burnout of a brother raids your fridge, I've become more ambitious. I've taken steps to reclaim my birthright. No, you don't mean. The channel is mine now, and I get to reap the rewards for the work you did. Now I don't have to make the annoying review. Uh, you really are a renegade, but you forgot one thing. Don't tie up someone with masking tape, idiot. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.